The following video has been approved by the Jetty marketing team. The video has been rated Jetty. The following video may not be suitable for all viewers. G'day mate and welcome to Dyson Sphere with me, Jetty. Today, myself and Icarus, we're going to be going through the Dyson Sphere, the end game, the final large project, the end goal of the game. And what I want to explain to you today is how to plan and build the Dyson Sphere, Dyson Sphere, the production chain to launch up the parts for the Dyson Sphere, along with what happens if you change your mind and you delete some of those parts. So, if you like the plan, hit the like button. It helps YouTube recommend the video to others who are probably struggling with planning their first Dyson Sphere. You can always click the subscribe button for more Dyson Sphere videos like this one. So, without other way, let's get down to business. Firstly, we have the tech. Um, so first thing is, as at the tech, we have the vertical launching silo. This is going to be the main requirement to actually starting to plan and build your Dyson Sphere. So it's going to give you access to the small carrier rocket along with the vertical launching silo, which has, well, they have a one hell of a production chain to each one of them. So let's go through the production chain really quickly. First off, we're going to need the small carrier rocket, which has three components, it has the Dyson Dyson Sphere component. It has deuterium fuel rods, which I do have a video up the top right hand corner on how to make deuterium en masse, along with the quantum chips. So let's first cover the deuterium because that's probably the easiest production chain. Um, obviously, you need the fuel rods themselves, which require titanium, deuterium, uh, along with the super magnetic ring. The super magnetic ring, if you remember, comes from energetic graphene, uh, the magnetic coils, along with ah, electric magnetic, magnetic turbine, which comes from the engine, which comes from more coils, more coils, more gears, more iron, more copper. This whole production chain here is, is very much iron, copper, and coal. Uh, on top of that, you're gonna need the titanium alloy, which is titanium along with steel, not too bad, and also some sulfuric acid for the ti ti titanium alloy, which of course is water, stone, and refined oil. So this production chain, actually a fairly easy one. Next thing we're going to require is going to be the Dyson Sphere components. The Dyson Sphere components actually have, well, actually let's do the quantum chips. Quantum chips are actually, again, a really easy one. They do require a lot, a lot of components, I guess. I, I, I always find that my quantum chips are the hardest thing to build, uh, and I always tend to be short on them, but it might be just me not building the ratio. Anyway, um, the quantum chips require uh, a plain filter along with the processor. Processors, if you remember, are... Uh, electronic circuits along with the micro crystalline component aka transistors um on top of that you're going to need the, the 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 i can't remember the name the plain filter which comes from titanium glass which is again glass titanium water not too hard along with what is the name of that crystal the casmere crystal which comes from titanium diamonds titanium crystals which comes from titanium along with the uh, organic crystals, which as you can see has one hell of a production chain as well, along with graphene. Graphene's not too bad, just requiring some um, sulfuric acid and uh, energetic graphene, along with some hydrogen. So this one's again, a fairly easy production chain. The one that's gonna be a killer is gonna be the Dyson the Dyson Sphere component, okay, which has three major parts, okay, it has the processor, the processor we've already covered, again, fairly easy, also has the sale, you're probably already making sales, you probably already have a production line up for sales, you've probably already built this, okay, it is the graphene along with the photon combiner, the photon combiner comes from the prisms along with the circuit boards, prisms are of course glass, circuit boards are iron and copper, not too hard. Uh, as for the graphene, again, it's sulfuric uh, graphene. Yes, graphene is sulfuric acid along with gra uh, energetic graphite, which of course is oil, water, stone, and coal. Again, not too hard. The one that is a bit of a nightmare is going to be uh, the frame material. So the frame material comes in from that one. Titanium alloy. Titanium alloy, which again is titanium uh, steel, acid, and titanium. Again, a fairly simple production. Uh, also needs some glass, uh, some gla uh, high purity silicon. Sorry, not glass, high purity silicon. But the one that you're going to find is going to be a 
little bit of pain is the carbon nan nanotubes. So the carbon na nanotubes come in from titanium and more graphene, which again is acid, oil, water, along with some uh, energetic graphene. So that is the production chain all the way up to there to get these three components together to finally, finally make a small carrier rocket to then finally launch it and put it into the vertical launching silo. So it is one hell of a production chain. This is all required to make one of these to make one part, one very, very small part of your Dyson Sphere. So with all of that out of the way, let's actually go in and start planning our Dyson Sphere. First off, we're going to go into the actual uh, Dyson Sphere interface and first off we're going to turn off our swarm orbits because we don't really need to see those um, as you can see i already have a couple layers i have the default layer i also have a second layer i've set up and a third layer because we were just experimenting a little bit so we're going to go and set up a new layer and you have a couple of sliders here okay first off you have the orbit radius okay you can set that as small or as large as you want it honestly doesn't matter, okay? It's really a cosmetic thing. It doesn't matter how close your sphere is to the sun or far and, or, or further away. It doesn't impact the amount of power you're going to get from each rocket or each sail, as we covered in the Dyson Swarm video. The only thing it will change is how big and complicated and potentially expensive you can make your sphere. So we're going to pick something relatively, relatively in size. Uh, next one is the orbit inc inclination. This basically affects the rotation of your sphere. Um, we're going to just set that to normal default. And the second one is longitude. That doesn't seem to do anything. It does affect the starting point of the Dyson sphere, but it's a sphere, so it's round, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so we're going to create that, and we're going to go into number four. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the run game. I want to turn the game off. It pauses the game, and it lets me build much much easier because everything's not rotating if we leave that on we can see that as we're trying to build things um stuff's going to keep moving anyway first thing we have is our options down the bottom so we have uh, this one which is to build a node this is to connect two nodes together with a frame in a geodesic i hope i pronounced that correctly uh format the next one is a gratitudic uh, line then this one is to build a shell obviously delete things and then we have no grid we can have a gratitudal grid or a geom ge geometric grid yeah 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 either lots and lots of little triangles or lots and lots of squares we're gonna go with squares for right now because it's just the easiest you can swap and change so i can build one there change the grid style build one there it really really doesn't matter so when we put down our very first node so i select the node well I select the node button and we're going to put a single node there. I can hover over that and click on it with the inspect tool and it's going to give me some stats. Now, the only stats we care about right now are the structural point and the cell point. Okay. The structural point is how many rockets is has to do with the rockets and the cell points have to do with how many sails. So we can see structural point 0030, which means I have zero rockets here zero rockets on the way and 30 are required total to complete out this node uh, cell points same story zero 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 it means there are no sales here we aren't asking for any sales and we don't need any sales zero is the maximum size uh size of the sales for this particular node so if we turn off run game and i just escape from that we can see already that i have 9630 rocket parts up of 9,660. Obviously, there's a 30, 30 difference, so I need to launch up 30 more rockets. So if we go back into the Dyson Sphere view, turn that off, we see I have a whole pile of rockets coming in as fast as they possibly can to hit this one node here. And if I can zoom in far enough, we'll see the rockets will come in. They'll actually spin a 180 before they land, and they'll actually build that node out. So straight away, I can see that I have six in here already. Uh, I've got 12 on, my, on the way of 30 total required. And I have a power generation of 575 kilowatts. I use a calculator. It's about 95 kilowatts roughly um, per node. Now, I am making some assumptions. My star luminosity is at 0.9999. So my calculations might not be 100% correct, but I don't have a star that gives me exactly a 1.0 figure. So, you know, there's, there's a little bit of... 
a little bit of like close enough, good enough maths going on. Anyway, um, as you can see, this is going to build out. Okay, so that's our first node. We're going to pause the game for just a second so I can build a second node. I want to get that as close to there as possible and turn run game back on. And as you can see, the you know, there's now a new node. It's going to request some rockets in just a second, hopefully. You're at 12 of 12. It might end up finishing the first one before it starts the second one. We'll find out in a second. Yeah, it looks like it's going to finish the first one before it starts the second one. That's all right. We'll hit run the game again, and we'll put in two more nodes. Because we're going to need four nodes. Well, maybe we can get away with three. All right, we'll hit that. We'll put in a cut. We'll be back in a second after these three are done, and we'll see whether we can build a Dyson sail, a Dyson sphere, a partial sphere with just three nodes. We'll be back in a second. All right, we have our three nodes. This one's not quite finished yet, but all the rockets are on the way. And what we're actually gonna do is I'm just going to pause the game for just one second to sort of explain the next part. So the next part is to make a building plan. This is actually to build a structure from one node to another node. And I'm going to just use the geocidric, ge geo, geode, asterisk, whatever, whatever, to join the three together. And as you can see, this has added these structural points in here, okay? Also, at the same time, if we click on these nodes, we can see it was 30 of 30 and complete. It's now 30 of 50. This one's 30 of 50. And this one is, well, 30 total of 50. At the same time, I'm going to... Hmm. At the same time, I want to explain the difference between these two different types of planets. So let's start up on a higher curve because it's much easier to see on a higher curve. And we're going to use just placing one node to another node. And we can see we can get... A, a straight line now it is straight around the curve it is still bent around the curve but it doesn't definitely doesn't follow the curvature of the sphere if we come over here and we do the exact same thing we can see that this one actually follows the curvature of the sphere so if I can get the right angle we can see that that one still curves around the top that one also curves around the top, but this also curves around the circle as well. So that's the main two differences between the two different build tools. And if we hit run game again, we're going to see that these should fill out with some rockets fairly quickly. Now we can see this maintains two frames, i.e. one, two. This maintains two frames, one, two. And this one also maintains two frames. But that's going to give us a little bit of surface area in the middle between some frames where hopefully we can hang a sail. Uh, speaking of sails, sails are actually made up of, well, Dyson Swarms. So we need to get our rail guns up and running. So let's just jump over here really quickly and I will start them firing and we should get the rail guns up and running in just a second to start refilling our swarm because my swarm is at zero. All right, with that done, turn that off. We can see that the framework, pause, uh, framework is starting to go in, okay? It's not complete, but that's perfectly fine. We have enough structure there that we can see the structure. And what I can actually do is I can use this build plan shell to click in the middle, which will fill in that internal area with sales. And now you can see I have 0016, 0040, and 0020, which means I'm actually looking for some sales to come and sit in these spots. Okay, so if we just go to here real quick and sure, that's probably enough sales. Uh, set you back to storage. Cool, that'll do us. Uh, turn that off again. And we'll see our rockets should finish out any second. Uh, that needs a couple more. That needs 10 more. That needs eh, 10 more as well. And where's our planet? Our planet looks to be over there. Is it daybreak yet? No, nah, it's definitely the middle of the night. Yeah, it's going to be a minute before our railguns get into range. We'll probably have this complete first. That's complete, that's complete, that's complete. We'll turn that off. And then for giggles, we will actually we'll extend it out. 
why not? And I'll even extend it out to there as well. Okay, we have the first of the railguns firing, and as you can see, they're going to fire sails into my swarms, wherever they are. I have a mass of swarms, because why not? And they're going to drop down the, the solar panels. Now, you've probably seen these, like, gold, silver sails before, but you've probably never seen them turn blue. What actually happens when they turn blue is they're actually being requested by your sphere. So if I click on this one, I can see that it's up to 11 of 40, 12 of 40, and it's going to keep counting up because it's going to keep requesting in more sales. It'll actually pull sales out of the existing network and bring them across here and put them into Bring them in the same way the rockets come in, so through the through the I don't know fire, the 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 the, the exhaust, whatever you want to call it at the rear, and the sails actually come in there and then become and then fill out this sail section, much like they have with the jetty plays. Now the pattern on the sails or on the sails you cannot change, which is a little bit unfortunate. I'd really like to change up the sail pattern every now and then, but yeah, this is how you slowly get sails into your network along with. Um, actually building out your sphere now a couple of questions a couple of questions is well first off let's add one in there as well so we have a little bit more to work with now question that's going to come up is what happens if you change your mind what happens if you, you decide you don't want this node that's half built you can we'll just turn that off for a second we ca you can do a couple of things one you can remove the individual frame segments so as you can see this has 50 of 60 this one has 31 of 40 uh, with with eight on the way if I remove that section, first off, you're going to see a couple of sails appear out of nowhere, and our power would have gone up. At the same time, we can see it's now 48 of 50. This one's 30 of 30 with 8 on the way. I have no idea what's going to happen. Those 8, you and I are going to find out together. Um, hopefully, they turn into extra sails. I'm going to go with no, they don't. No. But we can see that little blue sail there is hopefully, and those ones, hopefully going to come over here and go into the rear of these guys. Uh, actually, there's a whole... Whoop, it's hard to see with these layers on layers on layers. Yeah, we can see there's a whole cloud of them right here that are starting to form up and join into, into our little temporary uh, sphere. Now, the sails don't move around terribly quickly. Okay, it's really a set and forget sort of thing. They'll probably take a couple of cycles to actually come into the rear of these things, but they will slowly happen over time. Uh, at the same time, if we go, let's go to this, uh, that layer, that layer, sure. Let's just really quickly build another, uh, actually there's a whole pile of them coming in now. Uh, and join that to there, that to there, that to there, that to there. You can see I can plan all this out in one hit, fill it in, and then rockets will... The rockets will take care of their things, the sailors will take care of their things. Uh, yeah, you've got 40 on the way. You've got zero on the way because you don't actually have a sail structure. 36, 40, 40, 36. Same time, let's remove that and get a whole bunch more sails out. Now, each time you launch up a rocket section, they do have a certain amount of sails in them. I don't know if you get back the same amount of sails as you might have put in when you actually built the nodes. I highly doubt it, but, you know, at least you get something back if you change your mind or you choose to delete your sphere and rearrange it. Really, the... the the design of your sphere is completely cosmetic, and I do really encourage you to have a whole bunch of fun. So as we can see, they're slowly forming up. So they're going to come in here, they're going to do a 180, and then they should go into that, mach into that machine. Actually, we might be able to see better from this view. Yes. If I work out which way north is. Yeah, so as you can see, all these blue ones are coming in and they're going to go into the rear of that. As they go in, they'll actually start slowly building out the sails themselves. Okay, we needed, I can't remember what it was, 40, 100, 100 per. Um, now, each individual node can request up to 
at least as far as I've found, with the sales themselves, they can request up to 120 sales uh, per node. So if you have a lot of sales up, you start building what? If you have a lot of nodes already up, you can start launching sales out at a blinding rate, providing you have, as I said, enough nodes already complete that they can start receiving the sales. The biggest advantage of building a Dyson Sphere over a Dyson Swarm is a Dyson Swarm is permanent. The sales no longer decay, you can keep them forever. And as you can see, it started building the framework in here. Let's go back to that view. Oh, where is it? It's that little one there. Um, yeah, it's definitely building up the framework. Uh, yeah, these are only little, they only need 40 each. Uh, leave that view, go whoop, back into actually looking at the sun, uh, north, sorry about the flipping back and forth, it's just, yeah. So as you can see, it's slowly building out that section as more and more sales come in and join into the superstructure. So that's that done. Um, where is the other temporary one I built? It's over here. And as you can see, it's also building out. You can also see there's a dramatic size difference between a mostly complete one and a just started one. If we go into that node and we look at, no, what sphere was that? Whatever, it's that one. We can see, at least in the map view, right, that this one is 40, this one's six complete. That one's one complete. So if we go back to this view, click on the sun, zoom out. You can see that there is definitely a graphical difference between a partially complete, fully complete, just started. These will actually get larger and larger in time as more and more rockets show up. Where are my rockets? They're coming. Yeah, the rockets are not very big. Are there any rockets coming to this one? Whoops. Stop scrolling. There you go. Rockets to all of them. And you can see they all got just a little bit bigger. Anyway. Uh, back to this design so we can see... I want... No. Layer 2. Layer 1. Turn that off. Yeah, it, Things stack one on top of another. So you see this one's already requesting in solar sails. Okay. Uh, that one hasn't yet because it doesn't have enough structure points. That one's already started requesting in sails as well. And that one doesn't have enough structure points either. So yes, you can build, you can delete, you can rearrange. Um, at the same time, like I said, a Dyson Swarm is a permanent structure. The more... The more, or the larger you build the sphere, the more expensive they're going to be in structural points. If we, actually, let's just do a maximum size because we can. Create, layer five. Uh, cool, you're a very large offset. And we again do two grid points apart. We can see that needs 110 rockets, 110, 110, 110 compared to this one which needed 70 and our itty bitty one in here only needed 50. At the same time if we were to fill no fill that one fill thank you uh 500 500 sounds per node which is potentially a lot of power uh and once I finish removing everything, I can actually delete that layer and give myself more room for more layers. So with all that said, I'm going to uh, ask you, if you have any other questions, please leave them down in the comment section below or jump on our Discord. There is a link up the top right hand corner along with a link on your screen uh, and down in the description as well. We put links everywhere to jump on our Discord. On our Discord, you can ask more questions post more tidbits if you found something out about Dyson Spheres or any other part of the Dyson Sphere program that you'd like to share or maybe think other people would find helpful and interesting by all means jump on our discord server we have many 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 people that have gone from Factorio and Satisfactory across to Dyson Sphere because let's face it this this game is a whole bunch of fun at the same time if you love Dyson Sphere and you 
want to see more content like this, consider supporting on Patreon. Uh, finally, if you found the video helpful, click the like button below. And if you're new here, I invite you to click the subscribe button to see more Dyson's video, Dyson Sphere videos like this on your way out. Anyway, uh, lastly, you may notice on your screen, there is a playlist. By all means, if you're looking for more Dyson Sphere tutorial videos like this one, uh, have a check of the playlist. We did cover recently how to build Dyson Swarms, along with uh, how to set up interplanetary, the interplanetary logistic systems, along with the actual warp cores required for the interplanetary uh, systems. Anyway, with all that said, I do thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next video. All right, bye.